Hello everyone. Today we'll start the first chapter that is the introduction to the data structure. So before learning the concept of data structure, we need to learn what is the data, how the data it is going to be represented, what do you mean by data structure, what is the type of data type and the thing is what do you mean by abstract data type. So one by one we are going to be learn today. So the first thing is we need to discuss about the data representation. So before that we need to know what do you mean by data. So the data we are considering as it is a collection of numbers, alphabets and symbols combined to represent the information. So in the computer system the data means it is a combination of numbers or alphabets or the symbols. A computer takes raw data as an input and after processing of data it produces refined data as a output. It means that the computer doesn't understand the languages like English, Marathi, Hindi or anything. The computer is going to be considered only the binary numbers. Like if you want to save the characters, if you want to store the numbers, so the thing is all the data it is going to be represented in the form of binary. The next thing is if we are having the integer numbers. So like already we have learned in C programming language, what do you mean by integer number? So like 0, 1, 2, 3, these numbers we are calling as integer numbers. So the integer numbers is represented by its binary equivalent. The next thing is if you are having the negative numbers. So the negative numbers means like minus 1, minus 2. So if you are having the negative number is represented using 2's complement representation. The next thing is we need to consider about the characters like A, B, C or we are calling as alphabets. So the alphabets or the characters are going to be represented in ASCII number. And the last thing is we need to discuss about the real numbers. If you are having the real numbers, so is represented using IEEE representation format. It means that whatever the data we are considering, the data it is going to be stored into the computer system by using the binary language. So if you are having the integer number, it will consider the binary equivalent. If you are having the negative numbers, it is going to be considered the two's complement. If you are having the character, then it is going to be considered the ASCII number. And if you are having the real number, so it is going to be considering the IEEE representation format. So like that, the data it is going to be represented into the computer system. Now the thing is, before moving to the data structure, we need to know what do you mean by data. So the previously we have discussed that data, it is a collection of numbers or alphabets and the symbols. So basically here we are having the two types of data. One is we are calling as atomic data and second one is we are calling as a composite data. The first thing is we need to discuss what do you mean by atomic data. So the atomic data are not decomposable. Here we can consider the example like integer value 5 to 3 or the character value A or we can consider the value like a 5 to 3. So the three digits if we are considering separately like 5 afterwards 2 afterwards 3 then the meaning may be lost. If we are considering the character A so in that case the A character A we can't divide or like consider the 5 to 3 if we are combining the 5 to 3 in that case we are getting the number like 523. So like that the atomic data means what the data which are non decomposable. The second thing is we are having the composite data. So composite data means what? It is a composition of several atomic data and hence it can be further divided into two atomic data. It means that here we will consider the example of the date of birth. So consider the date of birth can be separated into three atomic values. First one gives the day of the month, second one gives the month and the last one gives the year. So here we are looking like the date of birth it is going to be divided like a day, month as well as the year. So here day we are considering as a 
atomic data month also we are going to be considering as a atomic data and year also we are going to be considering as a atomic data that is the thing we are going to be calling as a like date of birth we are going to be calling as a composite data now the important thing is we need to discuss about the data types in c programming language so in previous semester we have discussed related to the data types so a data type is a term which refers to the kind of data that variables may hold in a programming language so it means that we already know that if you want to store a value if you want to store a character if you want to store a string or any kind of data into the computer system we need to provide or we need to create a variable with proper data type like if we are trying to store an integer value then we need to use the integer data type if you want to store the floating point value in that case we are going to be using the floating data type if you want to store a character in that case we are using the character data type so like that we are going to be using the concept of data types and by using the data types we are trying to storing the data into the computer system so here if you want to create a variable with data type so in that case we are having the syntax like data type afterwards we need to provide the variable name so below we have taken an example like int x so int we are calling as a data type and x we are going to be calling as a variable name so in that case in computer c programming language so the x now it can hold the integer type of data it means that inside the x we can store the data like integer values like 0 1 2 3 like that and that is the concept we are going to be calling as a data types in c programming language so if the thing is if we are considering the data types in c so here basically we are having the three types of data types one is we are calling as a user defined data type second one is we are calling as a primary data type and third one is we are calling as a secondary data type so the first thing is we need to discuss about the user defined data type here user can create their own data types by using the concept of structure or union or we are considering as a enum so here directly user can create their own data types afterwards second thing is we are having the primary data types like already the inbuilt data types are going to be available like int character float double and these data types we are going to be calling as a primary data types and the last thing is we are having related to the secondary data types so here array pointer these things we are going to be considering as a secondary data types so by using these data types we are trying to store the different data into the computer system and this particular concept already we have learned into the c programming language and now the thing is the important concept we need to discuss about the abstract data type so the here the thing is we need to learn what is the meaning of abstract data type so here we can say that an abstract data type or we are calling as the adt is a data type that is organized in a such a way that specification of the objects and the operations on the objects is separated from the representation of the objects and the implementation of the object so in the below diagram we can say that only the operation name and its parameters are visible to the user through interface like consider here we can say into the right side we are having the abstract data type into the left side we are having the application program so inside the abstract data types we are having the public functions like we are going to be creating the different functions so here we are having the definition of that functions afterwards we are having the private function as well as we are going to be using the data structure and directly these abstract data types without knowing the operations we are going to be using into your application program now the thing is the abstract data type is a type for objects whose behavior is defined by a set of value and the set of operations the definition of adt only mentions what operations are to be performed but not how these operations will be implemented it does not specify how data will be organized in memory 
and what algorithms will be used for implementing the operations. It is called abstract because it gives an implementation independent view. The process of providing only the essential and hiding the details is known as abstraction. It means that like we are going to be using the different data types in our programs like integer, float or string. Now the thing is directly the int keyword we are going to be using in our program. The float keyword directly we are going to be using in our program. But we don't know what is the code here it is written for the int. What is the code here it is written for the float. What are the operation it is going to be written for the int or the float. It means that directly we are going to be using the int float in our programming languages without knowing the actual operation. And that is the concept we are going to be calling as a abstract data type. And the, here the thing is the user of the data type does not need to know how that data type is implemented. For example, we have been using primitive values like int float char data types only with the knowledge that these data types can operate and be performed on without any idea of how they are implemented. So a user only needs to know what a data type can do but not how it will be implemented. Think of ADT that is abstract data type as a black box which hides the inner structure and designs of the data type. That is the thing or that is the concept we are going to be calling as a abstract data type. So in our MSBT question paper many times they are going to be asked related to the questions like what is the meaning of data, what do you mean by linear and nonlinear data structure and also they are going to be asked like what is what do you mean by abstract data type. So today we will finish up here and into the next lecture we will start that is the what is the meaning of like data structure that is the concept of data structure or what is the need of data structure. Thank you one and all.